11. I'll read the first five verses in our hearing today, and then we'll try to preach, and you pray for us that the Lord would help us. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, whom he, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. I'm interested in verse number 5 this morning where the Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for the portion you directed my heart to. And, uh, Lord, I appreciate uh, your spirit giving us wisdom and guidance in the scriptures. Uh, Lord, I, I, I don't want to preach what I want to preach. I want to preach what you want said to help our people. And so, God, I pray that you'd take this message and help us today. Uh, Lord, you know who needs it. You know who needs to hear it. Well, we probably all need to hear part of this, at least some different parts. But, God, I pray for the divine anointing and unction from on high. And, God, Lord, that you would allow us to preach what you put in our heart and relieve the burden of our soul to this congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Within the context of Scripture, when you think about John chapter number 11, we know uh, that this is the famous text about the account of the sickness, the death, and the resurrection of this man named Lazarus. I want us to note four things out of these verses, and then we'll get to our thought this morning and preach. I know there is an identification in verse 1 and 2. The verse 1 and 2, the Spirit of God through the uh, writing of the Apostle John lets us know who these people are and where they are located. We know uh, that the people are Mary and Martha and Lazarus they are siblings and they live in a place called Bethany the word Bethany I've given you this before it means the house of dates or the house of misery. And the Word of God teaches us that Jesus oftentimes went to Bethany. Amen. Aren't you glad God don't mind coming by the house of misery every once in a while? You know who lives in the house of misery? Miserable people. And by the way, we're all miserable without Jesus, but I'm glad He came to where we is at. And so that's the identification, verse 1 and 2. Verse 2, He gives a little parenthetical statement there where He lets us know that it is that Mary uh, that anointed the Lord Jesus' feet with her... Uh, 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 with that ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. And so there's the identification. Then in verse number 3, we note the invitation. The Bible says, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he, speaking of Lazarus, whom thou lovest, is sick. They sent an invitation to the Lord Jesus. They said, oh, Lord, uh, you know, Lazarus, the man that you love, your friend, how oh, you spent time around our table, how oh, you spent time around our home, how oh, you've been around all that. He is sick. He is not doing well. Oh, would you please come? And aren't you glad to know, uh, even though we know how the story goes and how uh, everything falls out in this chapter, uh, but thank God they knew who to call uh, when they got in a time of trouble. Amen. Thank God they knew who to reach out to when trouble came. Uh, there's a lot of people, uh, they go everywhere else but the Lord uh, when trouble comes and when trials come and difficulties come. But aren't you glad we have a very present help in time of need? I'm glad we can call out to Him in time of trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, the psalmist said. The Bible said in Hebrews 13, verse number 6, that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I'm glad we can uh, call out to God uh, during times of trouble. I mean, there's going to be times when you're going to try to call me or try to call a brother or a sister in Christ, and they may not hear their phone ring, or they may not be able to answer it. But I'm glad there's never been a time uh, when we've called out to God in prayer, uh, that God, we got to busy signal and we didn't go to his voicemail uh, but he heard our prayer amen I'm glad he always promised to hear us uh, when we cried out to him and so there's the identification and there's the invitation watch this notice the intentions in verse number four when Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death uh, but for the glory of God that the son of God might be glorified thereby you know the Lord had a plan he had a purpose 
purpose in all of this. Oh, Lazarus' sickness did not catch him by surprise. He was not caught off guard oh, when he found out that Lazarus was sick. Oh, but he told that messenger and he told the disciples oh, that this sickness was not unto death. Oh, now Bible correctors and people oh, that want to find mistakes in the Bible oh, will say there is a mistake there oh, because we know how John 11 goes. Oh, we know that Lazarus dies. Is that not right? And somebody said, well, preacher, oh, there's a contradiction in the Bible oh, because he said that Lazarus was not going to die. That is not what Jesus said. Jesus said of oh, this sickness is not unto death. Here's what that means. The word unto is the key word in that phrase. The word unto means to the advantage of. In other words, he said, this sickness is not going to be to death's advantage. Yeah, Lazarus may die, oh, but he's not going to stay dead. Amen. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. And aren't you glad Jesus knows it doesn't catch him off guard. It doesn't catch him by surprise. I tell you, there's a lot of things I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of things I can't see. Oh, the songwriter said many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know that he holds my hand. This sickness did not catch Jesus by surprise. In fact, Jesus said, I, here's the intentions. I'm going to get glory out of this. There's identification there's the invitation. There's the intentions. But I'm interested in verse number five. Very short verse this morning. I'm interested in the information. Now, Jesus loved Martha, Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Verse five is another one of them little kind of verses stuck in there that really is not in the story. This was not in the conversation between the Lord and his disciples or the Lord and the messenger. It says, the Holy Spirit of God, Brother Charles, told John, said, put in there that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Put that in there. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Who does the Lord love? Who does the Lord love? Now, we understand this this morning. We know that Jesus has global love. The Bible said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that. I'm glad I'm not like a Calvinist uh, that will take that word world and say, Well, that world should be elect. For God so loved the elect. That's a bunch of hogwash. Amen. I'll say it in Japanese. Hoggywashi. Amen. Uh, that's not right. Uh, Jesus knows how to write world, and He knows how to write elect. And Jesus loved the world. Uh, what's that crowd do with First John 2 where it says, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only uh, but for the sins of the whole world so he, he puts a, a difference between the world and the, and the saved and not just for our sins John's writing to believers uh, but for the sins of the whole world I'm glad Jesus paid it all there's not been, there's not been one sin uh, committed since Adam and Eve sitting in the garden and there's not one sin uh, that will be committed throughout eternity throughout that millennial reign uh, that Jesus hasn't paid for I'm glad he paid for all the past, present, and future sins. So I said, preach up. Oh, when I got saved, Jesus saved, uh, saved all my past sins, uh, but I'm not saved from my future sins. Honey, when Jesus died on the cross, all your sins are future sins. Thank God he washed them away in the red blood of Calvary. And we, there, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But I'm glad his blood washed those sins away. And Jesus loves the world. He don't care what color they are. He don't care what their financial status is. He don't care what side of the tracks are from. He don't care if they're on the street corner or in the pulpit. Amen. Uh, Jesus loves sinners. Jesus has a global love. Jesus also has giving love. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You know, talk's cheap. Amen. Talk is cheap. Uh, but Jesus illustrated, but God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, but the Tony had done a whole lot more uh, than just say that he loved us. Uh, but he went to Calvary and he showed that he loved us. Amen. Oh, the whole what manner of love uh, the Father had to stone upon us uh, that we should be called the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Uh, but we do know we, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. 
uh, for we shall see him as he is. You know why we have that this morning? Because Jesus loves me, this I know. Uh, for the Bible tells me so. He has a global love. He has a giving love. Oh, but he has great love. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Oh, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Watch it now. He don't say he loved the world. He don't say he loved the church. Paul said, who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm glad Jesus died for the world. I'm glad he gave himself for the church. Oh, but I'm like Paul. I'm a little partial to the fact oh, that he loved me. And not only did he love me, Brother Travis, but then he gave himself for me. He gave himself for Richie Henson. He gave himself for Linda Androvich. He gave himself for Charles Allen. He gave himself for Daxton Montgomery. He gave gave himself for our sins. Yes, sir. Amen. Boy, don't I make it personal. Yeah. Every wrong thing you did, every mistake you ever made, every sin, you were born a sinner. You were like that. You, when you disobey, uh, when you do wrong, I'm talking to children and adults, uh, when you disobey, you are a sinner. Sinners do bad things. We always think of bad things as murder and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And certainly that is the case. Uh, but you know, if you tell a lie, oh, that's a sin. You know, if you disobey your mom and dad, young people, oh, that's a sin. You know, if you have a bad attitude, that's a sin. But aren't you glad that Jesus paid all of our sin debt and he paid the debt oh, that we could not ever pay? We sing it in the choir. He paid a debt oh, that he did not owe. And I owed a debt that I could not pay. And we got together on that deal. And I promise you, honey, I come out way better on that deal than he did. Amen. He has global love. He has giving love. He has great love. So when I, when I am preaching this morning and I announce my title as, Who does the Lord love? So I said, he loves everybody. And you would be correct in that assessment. He does. I hope you understand that this morning. But the word love in verse number 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. The word loved here, it is that agapo, that, that love, that passion, that Greek word. But it also gives the idea to be pleased with. Now, I, I gave this illustration a few months ago when I preached on the word love out of John 14. We all love our children. Amen. But there are times when we're not pleased with them. Amen. We're not happy with what they've done. When Judah's over there eating cat food. Somebody help me. We're not starving, okay? She just, we didn't put the baby get up and looking at her. She just going after it, all right? I'm like, oh, whoa, stop that, you know. Grace probably didn't want me to tell that, but it's the truth, amen. Uh, too late now, amen. Uh, if we didn't have the cats, that wouldn't have happened. Just saying. But anyway, not my fault. I didn't get the cat. Well, I got Jasper. That's my only problem, amen. Uh, but here, or Nova. But here's my, here's my thought this morning. We love all of our children, but there are times when they just... They're so precious, ain't they? That's not that's giving your ever-loving last nerves. Oh, don't look at me like your kid's perfect. He's just as big as Brad as my three are. Oh, you know some of y'all act so spiritual, like my kid never. Oh, you are a liar, and we all know where liars go. Washington, okay? Amen. <laughs> There's times when they dump their cereal out and they're you know, drawing in their milk on the plate and on the table, and, and this, they just do goofy things. I mean, like. Like, Daxon has to, Daxon and Sider feel like they have to touch everything. I mean, they have to do everything, touch everything. I like, stop! <laughs> Nut! <laughs> and I'm not always well pleased, but I love them. I love them. I'd give myself, I'd, I'd give my life for any of my kids. I'd give your life for any of my kids, amen. Don't look at me like that, you would too, amen. We, we, we love, but we're not always well pleased. The Lord loves everybody. He loves his children, but he's not always well pleased with us. And looking at this text, the Spirit of God specifically had John to mention the fact in this little parenthetical statement. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. There are three characteristics in these three people that I want us to note this morning of the kind of people that Jesus loves. Now, we're not talking about sinners this morning. We understand that. He loves all sinners, okay? 
Uh, when I say love, I want you to think of being well pleased with, just like you would. Boy, uh, I, you know, that side brought us a, a picture he cut her last night. I said, boy, I love that. that. I didn't mean because you made me that picture, I love you. Did you hear me? It's just, boy, I, I am pleased with that. I love that you did that. Amen. And so, so uh, what is this? Well, let's look at Martha first. Jesus loves the worker that will labor for him. That is what Martha is known for, is it not? I mean, she's just a worker. I mean, she is a go-getter. I thought about this. I have a lot of verses written down. You know them in Luke chapter number 10. Uh, Jesus went in a certain village, and uh, Martha received him into her house, and he, she made a supper, and Mary sat at the Lord's feet and heard his words. I understand Mary had a wrong attitude there. That is not the burden of this message. Uh, but the point is that Martha was busy serving. You know, Jesus don't really, is not pleased with laziness. I thought about this about Martha. She was intelligent. She knew about the Savior. The Bible said she received him into her home. She knew who Jesus was. You know, we pick, all, we pick a lot on Martha about her uh, letting Mary have it because Mary wanted to sit and hear the words of the Lord, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but, you know, when Jesus comes later on in John chapter 11, I was reading this uh, this morning or last night, or, or it might have been last night at this morning at the same time. I don't remember. Uh, but when Jesus come to Mar Martha and said, Thy brother shall live again, you know what Martha said? Yeah, I know my brother shall live again at the last day. That's theology. That's resurrection theology. Apparently, while Martha was in there cooking, she was listening. She was getting something. She was hearing. She's not no dummy. She's not ignorant. She knew. Uh, she knew about the Savior, but then she knew about service. There's a lot of people, uh, they do, 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 but they don't know anything about the Bible. They don't know anything about the Lord. They never worship. They never honor God. All they are is, is busy. But we need people that know. In other words, she saw a need and she met the need. I like this fact. She allowed Jesus in her home. That means her home was prepared for guests. Yeah. Amen. There's nothing spiritual about a dirty house. Amen. 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 I, I, all of our houses get dirty, but that's why you clean them. I, I, get, I get aggravated these Facebook posts on, on, on Facebook. That's where Facebook posts are at, you know. And, uh, and you know, if you got uh, this, these mom's pages. My wife likes these mom pages, and so the way I get back at her is I like all these baseball pages, okay. And, and I read some of these mom pages. Some of these women, I mean, my Lord, they need to grow up. They have one kid, and they're like the expert mother. They don't know squat, okay. They don't know squat. I know more about them than they do, okay. I just know. I got three. They've had one, okay. And they do these little poses. It's okay if the dishes are falling out of the sink and the trash is coming out of the trash can. You just, I'm like, no, that's not okay. Where's your dumb husband? <laughs> Amen. They're not, not spiritual about a sloppy house. And apparently Martha was, you know, she, her house was ready. The Lord, would you please come to my house? Amen. Well, I know that would go over real well. Amen. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. There ought to be some, some commitment. I'm not preaching on, on house cleaning this morning, even though my wife and my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, if you need somebody to clean your house, there's a plug there for you. Uh, but what I'm saying, if you're, hey, if this message has touched you, see one of them after service, they'll clean your house, okay? Uh, but what I'm saying, and I know our house, you know, your house, we clean our house every week. Amen. We, we try to clean our house every day. Amen. Try to keep things, you know, because, and thank y'all for not being like this, but there's some places people just show up at the preacher's house. That's why for years I didn't want my address put in the, in the address book. Didn't want to like show it up. But, hey Amen. Well, y'all, I don't show up at your house unexpected, except Eric's. I usually call him. I'm usually looking for food when I'm over there, though, or a pressure washer or a tool or something. But what I'm saying this morning, her house was ready to receive the Lord. Are you ready for service? Are you ready to do something for the Lord? Are you ready to get involved in what God has for you? She was intelligent. She knew about the Savior. She knew about service. But watch this about Martha. She took the initiative. Not only was she intelligent. Y'all still with me? Did that dirty house comment ruin you? All right. Charles didn't bother him. Hey, man, I'm not that good. Hey, man. Y'all, hey, let me just, let me just man, y'all to help your wife out. Y'all to take out the trash. Y'all to help with the dishes. Hey, man. Y'all to help make up the bed. Don't even try to mess with the pillows. Make up the bed and say, you do the pillow combination, and, you know, it'll be a 50-50 thing, okay? I am getting a little bit better. She got rid of less pillows, and so God is moving in our home. Y'all keep praying, okay? Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, y'all to help out. Hey, it's a sorry man uh, that won't help his wife around the house, hey, amen, and do something for them, hey, amen? Uh, and so, and so, uh, but nobody, she took the initiative. Nobody had to beg Martha to serve. Nobody had to bribe Martha to serve. Nobody had to beat Martha in the service. Go do this. It was in her heart. 
It was in her soul. That's what she wanted to do. You know what Jesus said? I like that. I like the fact. I love the fact. I'm pleased with the fact of that she saw a need. She saw something that needed to be done, and she got busy about that. Amen? Hey, you shouldn't have to have somebody tell you to pick up trash out of the parking lot. You didn't have to have somebody tell you uh, to throw the donut box away when the last donut is gone, Daxton. Uh, I'm just telling who got the last donut? Who was talking to somebody this morning about who got the last donut? It was Wade? It was, was Dax. I thought you was pointing at Wade. Amen. Uh, well, you shouldn't have to have somebody to tell you that. There's just things you, and you know, take the initiative. Just do it. Amen. Uh, and then, you know, she was, be, she was involved. She wasn't sitting on the sideline. This is not a smack towards Mary, uh, but something, things had to be done. She was busy in her duties. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with all thy might. Don't do a halfway job. Don't do a shoddy job. Do it right. Amen. That's why I appreciate, and, and yeah, I'm married too, but I appreciate my wife, how she keeps the church clean. And I appreciate Brother Tony helping me cut the grass around here, taking care of that. And I threatened to whoop him this week because he said he's going to cut the grass. I said, Brother, don't do that. You've had too much. And he said he wanted to do it. And so I'm, I appreciate that somebody just takes the initiative and wants to do that and keeping the house of God looking nice thank God for that it's got to be done somebody's got to do it and and they do it right and it looks good around here and thank God for that and I think you appreciate that don't you amen but then she was a blessing to the disciples I mean here's these disciples uh, they're traveling with Jesus and they, I bet they love going to Martha's house I got a home cooked meal they got to sit down and have some fellowship thank God for those people that are a blessing Jesus said I love those kind of people she was, she was intelligent. She took the initiative. She was involved. She was important. What she was doing needed to be done. What are you doing in the church that needs to be done? There's something to do. Amen. I mean, it may, it may seem small or insignificant to you, uh, but a lot of things that may seem small or insignificant to you is taking a burden off me. Miss Delane and Miss Linda take care of the bulletins. That's, some, that's two less things that I have to worry about. That's a blessing to me. That may not seem like much to them. They've never said that. But that may seem like something small. That's a blessing to me. Those are things that need to be done. Brother Tony taking care of the grass. I was gone preaching this week. And I'll be gone this week. And, but he took care. I appreciate that. Uh, Brother Rob and Brother Jared and Brother Phil, those that run the sound and the camera. I mean, I can't do all that. That's a blessing to me. And, you know, whatever you're doing, it may seem small or insignificant, uh, but it needs to be done. And God may want you to do do that uh, because we're in the body of Christ. Everybody's got their part. Everybody's got something to do. And if you don't have something to do, see Charles. Okay? But what I'm just saying is find something to do. Amen? Find something to do. So, boy, i got to hurry. Jesus loves those that will work. That are workers that will labor for Him. Are you doing anything for God? Are you, are you busy for the Lord? Amen? So much laziness. People just want to come in, they, they want to sit for their hour or through their 45-minute service and, and go through the motions. Uh, they never give, they never participate, uh, they never pray, they never uh, bring their Bible, they never participate in those things. I, I'm just telling you, we ought to want to get involved in those things. Jesus loved Martha. He loved that work ethic that she had. She wasn't lazy. And, and, then, and I know she had a bad attitude. You know, why don't you make her help me? I know, but you know, when you're busy and you're trying to get things done, sometimes you'll spout off and not mean to. Have a little mercy on Martha. I mean, if Martha wasn't doing that, they'd all starve to death. Amen. I may not get off this point this morning. I may finish it the rest of the night. I'm like, Jesus loves somebody that'll get involved. That'll do something. Are you doing anything for the Lord? What are you doing? What are you involved in? Do you know? You know, it ought not be around here when we have, and I know we have the, the cleanup teams and all that, uh, but it shouldn't be. Well, I'm not on the cleanup team, so I don't have to. I don't have to take out that trash. No, if you see somebody struggling, help them out. Lend a hand, amen. We ought to all get involved, even though we have the cleanup teams. That just helps us organize. Uh, but we're in this thing together, amen. You know, everybody wants to be a servant until they get treated like one. You know what Jesus did that night in John chapter number 13, but just a few hours before he'd be betrayed and go to Calvary. He took aside his garment, took a towel, and he washed the disciples' feet. He, and he said, he gave an example of being a servant, being a worker, laboring. And what did he say in Philippians 2? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery equal of God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a, help me church, servant. A form of a servant. 
serving others, doing something for somebody else. You know, we, we're we aggravated, aggravated, at least I am, with this crowd that's always wanting a handout and always wanting somebody to you know, do for them, do for them, do for them. But they don't ever do anything for anybody else. They don't want to get involved. They don't want to give. They don't want to participate. And I know that's not our congregation this morning, uh, but we ought not be that way in the work of the Lord. Amen. You know, you get out of church what you put into it. And I'm not talking about the offering plates. Hey, man, you get out of it what you put in. How much prayer did you put into it? How much, how much time did you labor in prayer and labor in the Word over this? Jesus loves somebody they will say, hey, there's something needs to be done. we got to do it. You know, we always think of that as, you know, just cleaning or cutting the grass or something. But, you know, somebody's got to pray for the service. Hey, man, somebody ought to pray for the service. Somebody ought to pray for the sinners. Somebody ought to pray uh, for the preacher that God would give him the message. Uh, somebody ought to come prepared to worship. You realize you could have the key to a service. But if you're not prepared and you're not involved and you're just sitting there on the sideline, we can miss out on a great blessing. Are you involved? Are you prepared? Jesus loved Martha. This doesn't mean... And, and I, I, I'm going to close out. I'm, I'm not going to preach the other two. I'll preach the other two tonight, Lord willing. But you know, there's some people, Brother Richie, they, they, all they are is work, 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 work. I don't know about church work. And they don't know anything about that book. That ain't the will of God either. I done told you, Martha knew about a resurrection. Martha said, I believe that you're the Son of God. She said that. Obviously, while she's in there, she heard. She knew who he was. If, if she didn't believe he was the Messiah, why did they call for him when Lazarus got sick? She knew. Let's not, be, let's not be spiritually ignorant where we just do, do, and do all these things and we're not involved. I'll tell you, there is a danger with Martha. Martha did neglect the one thing that was needful. Sometimes she got so busy by the Tony working that she neglected time at the Lord's feet. And that happened to all of us. Martha, or Mary probably, I'm, I'm sure Martha helps, Mary helps serve from time to time. I, I don't, I would say I don't know of any, but I, 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 see, I see Mary getting involved. But Mary knew when it was time to work and when it was time to worship. We're going to look at Mary and Lazarus tonight, Lord willing. But, and I know this is odd for a Sunday morning sermon to preach on doing something in the church. But what are you doing? I'm not scolding you this morning. If whatever you're doing seems like insignificant, it's not. It's important. I mean, how many sinners want to come to a church where the grass is knee high, the carpet's dirty, the bathrooms are filthy, and I preach there. Who wants to go to that? Nobody does. We want to have a building that is clean and nice, a bulletin that looks sharp, a prayer bulletin that, that is detailed, that looks sharp, those things. Hey, man, we ain't got to be sloppy because we're, you know, old-timey. We can actually have a little bit of class and style. I, I look real classy this morning until I went to button up my coat and my bottom button fell off this morning. Y'all pray for me. It ain't because it, this jacket fits all you hypocrites out there picking on me. I didn't try to button this car and it fell off. I noticed it Thursday when I had this suit on, and so uh, now I have something to do this afternoon. Uh, but what I'm saying this morning it, it, you ought to have class and do things right. That's what, Mary, that's what Martha was doing. Martha was involved. Are you involved? Are you laboring for the Lord? I'll give you one more verse and we'll, and we'll go. Colossians chapter number 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Verse 23 of that same chapter. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not in the men. You know, I'm not just talking about working in the church. But you know, while you're on your job, you ought to work as unto the Lord, not in the men. You know, if you'll do that, you'll be a good employee. Because you're not just trying to work for your boss. You're trying to honor God. You ought to try to be the best wheel man in, in your company. I, I, I'm not saying that you're not. But not for your boss, but for the glory of God. Hey, man, uh, brother, brother uh, you ought to be the best. Well, you got some competition with Cardick and Brother Matthew. You ought to be the best Chick-fil-A employee, not, not for Brother Matthew. You ought to want to honor your boss and, 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 your, and your, uh, your owner and all that, your operator. It's, boy, I've been out of the Chick-fil-A for almost 11 years. I'm missing my terms, okay? Uh, but you ought to do it for the Lord. 
So I say, you say you ought to make a chicken sandwich for the glory of God? Absolutely. Amen. You ought to work. Amen, Brother Travis. You ought to work at that mobile home place for the glory of God. Amen. You ought to do everything you can for God's glory. Why? Because God's the one that gave you the strength. He gave you the ability. He gave you the talent. He gave you that job. He gave you that job. You ought to do, try to do your best for Him. And if you'll do your best for Him, the world will take notice. Because you, it won't be... Look, and I'm done. Come on, Brother Matthew. How many has ever had a bad boss before? Everybody, okay? How many currently have a bad boss? <laughs> okay, well, okay. I, God bless you. I see that hand. You know what will help you with that? Oh, yeah, Linda raised her hand. Grace is her boss. That's called payback. That's called payback right there, okay? But you know, we, we laugh. But you know, that little verse, doing it unto the Lord, will help you with that bad boss that you have. I'd say, that boss I have such a jerk and a moron. He is. That's right. But if you're doing that job to honor the Lord, you won't care what the boss says. I'm, I'm not working for him. I'm working for the Lord. I'm doing it unto the Lord. You know what the Lord said? I love that about Martha. She is a worker that will labor and get involved. Tonight, we'll look at the last two. Let's stand together. Maybe you need to come pray this morning. What is your involvement? How are you serving?